such a part of the South Florida landscape as palm trees and pelicans. I hope she likes it. It supplied him with material for his best-selling novels like Skin Tight, Basket Case, and Skinny Dip. Wild parodies populated by phone sex script writers, sleazy plastic surgeons, crooked politicians, and the lobbyists who own them. How would you describe your writing? Oh, I think it's, uh, it's disturbing to some people. <laughs> um, it's manic. It's, it's the great thing about the journalism is you sort of flow with the event of, events of news with the novel, which you're creating this whole different set of characters. And then you really have to get into the dark, deep recesses of the brain. And I think that's, that's where m my own family trembles at times. <laughs> <laughs> what are the deep, dark recesses of your brain? I think when, especially when you're writing humor and you're writing satire, uh, and I've said this before, but pe uh, a lot of that comes from anger. Do you need to be angry to be funny? Some days, yeah, yeah. Much of that anger is reserved for the forces of development, which have transformed Florida from the quaint tropical postcard he grew up with to urban sprawl, strip malls, and skyscrapers. Hyacinth sees it as a daily collision between nature and the unnatural the appealing and the appalling, as manatees fight for space with manatee mailboxes, and developers pave over 450 acres of green space every day. The one word that no politician will ever speak is enough, enough. This is an economy that's based on growth, growth for the sake of growth. We don't manufacture anything. We don't produce anything except you know, oranges and handguns. This is all about growth, tourism and growth. Why did you decide to start writing novels? Therapy, actually. With the novels, you have this wonderful opportunity to write your own endings, to have the bad guys get not only exactly what they deserve, but in some poetic, uh, you know, miserable way. And nature always gets its revenge. One villain was run through with a bill of a stuffed marlin. A few have been fed to alligators. Another was romanced to death by a friendly porpoise named Dickie the Dolphin. Which was based on a real episode. In the real life thing, the guy didn't die, but he was definitely uh, a lot more intimate with the dolphin than he would have liked to be. So I said, I got a bad guy in the book. This is a perfect way to get rid of the bad guy. And I did. And, and I felt great at the end of it. I felt like lighting a cigarette when it was over, you know? Hyacinth, who says he can't write without his noise suppressors and fishing cap, takes the raw material of South Florida, then molds and shapes it into comic mystery novels, often with only minor embellishments. Last year's bestseller, Skinny Dip, opened with the heroine being flung off the stern of a cruise ship, only to be saved by a floating bale of marijuana. It hasn't happened yet, but in South Florida, it certainly could. There's been more than one occasion when I've, what I thought wrote with, with this, the sickest possible scenario into a novel and, and gotten it published and been very proud of it and only to have real life come along and trump me very shortly afterward. I'm going to do a little quiz with you. Uh oh Are these stories true or inventions of your imagination? <laughs> Professional wheelchair thief. True. School board candidate whose legal residence turned out to be a tool shed. True. A U.S. attorney who bit a stripper during a table dance. It's real. True. South Florida mayor who tried to hire city hall workers to kill her husband. Yep, yep. I believe she's gotten a new trial since then, but uh, there was testimony that she solicited for a hitman uh, in city hall. All those are true? I wish I'd made them up. I wish I'd made them up. Well, these are, these are if you think he's exaggerating, there are plenty more examples in a folder he keeps in his office, really just filled as with as South Florida news clippings. Gators in bed is bad idea. <laughs> this was a story about a guy who was sleeping with two full-grown alligators, and a court ruled that he, there was no constitutional right to sleep with an endangered reptile. And that happened in Florida. Was he sleeping with them? Yes. In he, what way? In the way, that, the way that you're suggesting with your eyebrows. That's exactly how he was sleeping with them. That's a good one. Here's a guy who was stealing medical equipment. He was unhooking patients from their heart monitors and stealing the heart monitors. This was in West Palm Beach. That's quite a crime when you think about it. <laughs> the guy's on the heart monitor. Excuse me while I take the machine. If you ask him why all of this stuff seems to happen in Florida, he'll give you a standard reply. Now, the most common answer that people give is if you took the continental United States and you tilted it a little bit, all the sludge 
would drip all the way down the peninsula, all the way down this highway. All the way right past your house? Right past my house. Hyacinth's house is in the Florida Keys, the American archipelago connected to the Florida mainland by a thin strip of Highway 1. He's almost as close to Havana as he is to Miami. But even here, it's impossible to escape the crush of 40 million tourists who traipse through the state every year. Look, if they got the kid on a leash, see? See the leash? <laughs> yeah, that's good. Wait till the pelican grabs her. What's going on out here? It's a classic uh, Keys, uh, you know, tourist stop. You stop and you buy a bucket full of dead fish, and you walk to the end of the dock and feed these giant tarpon. Some of them are huge. It's fun to do that. But in inevitably, somebody gets their hand, you know, the fish, they keep their hand down too long, you'll hear a scream, and they'll have a big tarpon hanging off their hand, which was entertaining for everybody but the tourists, who's for the poor person. The tourists eventually go home. The larger problem for Hyacin is the thousand people who move here every day. Most of them, he says, are either running to something or from something. Many of them are retirees looking for a slice of paradise. Some are predators who consider them prey. Half the guys who get booted off of Wall Street by the SEC are now working in Boca Raton, Florida. Another reason Florida has become so desirable for undesirables is that it has the most generous bankruptcy laws in the country. So people facing the prospect of jail or civil judgments buy houses here knowing they can't be seized. A number of former executives from Tyco and WorldCom have already moved here, along with a few down-and-out celebrities. You know, after the second O.J. Simpson trial, I see his lawyer being interviewed on the steps of the courthouse. And, well, you know, Mr. Simpson may have to leave California. He doesn't have this kind of money, and he may have to leave California. And I turned to my wife, and I said, he's coming to Florida. And here he is, you know. Unfortunately, the craziness of South Florida has provided a certain anonymity to all sorts of wackos even terrorists. And if the place wasn't so dysfunctional, Hyacinth says, maybe something could have been done about that. I was watching a living room, and the, they started showing the pictures of Muhammad Atta and then the others and I, in those photographs. And I said to my wife, I, I swear to God, those are Florida's, Florida driver's license photographs. At least nine of them, I believe, and possibly more, had lived and worked and, and trained for their suicide mission here in Florida. And I always tell people, you think that was an accident? You know, where's the one place in the United States where the bar of bad behavior is so high that nobody's going to notice these guys? Nobody's going to think twice when they walk into a flight school and say, I'd like to get on the 757 simulator, but I don't need the part about where you land it. Just teach me how to fly it around. And pay in cash, and they say, oh, right this way, Mr. Ava. Sit over here. You know, the one guy, he goes to Minneapolis, he goes to Minnesota to learn, and he's in jail in about 25 minutes. First, I was surprised, and then it all made sense. It all makes sense when you think about it. Why not? Of course. Now, I'm thinking... You might think that his take on the Sunshine State would upset the natives, but he has never been more in demand. A recent appearance in Jacksonville attracted 5,000 people. His first children's book, Hoot, became a number one bestseller and is being produced for the screen by his friend Jimmy Buffett. And director Mike Nichols has optioned his latest novel. How do you maintain the anger level? I mean, things are going pretty well for you. I mean, this is nice. <laughs> and it, it's very nice. And this is my escape, is to just get in a boat and disappear on the water. Most days, when he's finished writing, he's out in Florida Bay, usually alone, holding his skiff and looking for bonefish on the edge of the Everglades. This is beautiful out here. It's like church, for me, anyway. It's gorgeous. Good cast. So we're away from the weirdness now. Yeah, we are totally away from the weirdness, uh, except for me. All these little fish and all the stingrays and little sharks and everything. You're right in the middle of it, which makes it so much fun. Even if you're not catching any fish, it's a blast to be out here. It's certainly therapeutic. Your agent says that you are a fisherman who happens to write. I would take that as a compliment any day. I need to do it to stay sane. So I think that, you know, the official version is that it's number three on my list behind uh, behind the writing and behind my family hang on he could spend a lot more time out here if he unhooked himself from the weekly newspaper deadline but he says it's still the most important thing he does his connection to the real world and the adrenaline rush of writing a great column that ruins some low life's lunch is better than a florida sunset right in the old solar plexus nothing is better than that feeling nothing is better